Alright, what's up guys? Uh, second video here. Uh, I already did everything to the car because I was also messing with my graphic settings and whatnot. No BS. So while I was doing that, I was tuning the car as well, so I thought I'd just go over some of the adjustments I did. Uh, the first thing I did was a high speed compression, and that was to really help out, like on corners like turn 5 when you're coming up over that crest. The car just kind of wanted to jump, so by taking out a little bit of this high speed compression dampening, we actually allow the wheel to travel up quicker, absorbing that bump a little bit better, and not really like leaping up off there. So that was the first thing I did. The uh, second thing I did was increase the low speed compression dampening in the front. So I took that up just uh, one click because I wanted the front end just to be a little bit more responsive. It was kind of being sluggish going through the corners. So by increasing that compression dampening, you're increasing the force of the, or you're slowing down the motion of the spring com com uh, compressing. By slowing down that motion, you're just causing a little the weight transfer to happen actually a little bit quicker because you're that's not that extra time that it would have take that um, shock to travel a little bit farther down. That would actually you know be a less of a transition going over. So just when you increase the front compression dampening to a point, it'll make the front end more responsive. If you go too far, then it'll start making the car a little skittish, but I just want to make that front end a little bit more responsive. So that's why I did that. After that, I still couldn't get the rotation I wanted. It was pushing through turn one. So I wanted to get it to rotate a little bit more, so I just increased the rear ride height one click. Took that up a click, and that just gives the car more overall rotation because now you're increasing the, uh, raising the center of gravity of the rear of the car. So it changes the whole pivot of the car and just gives you a little bit more general oversteer, and that seemed to help out nice. Um, after that, I increased the rear low speed rebound dampening. And the reason I did that is when getting into the corner entry, the car was starting to just become, we started putting more rotation into it. So the car was starting to just be a little too loose, like uh, going into turn nine there. It was just kind of hard to trail brake it. So I increased the rear low speed rear bound dampening because that slows down the weight transfer in the, in the rear. Just allowing that rear end to be a little bit more controllable, stiffens up the rear roll center, but it, it just transfers the weight slower so you can control you know if if you were to take this down to say like an eight then the weight would want to transfer a lot quicker in the rear and it might unsettle the car more but if the car is pushing and it feels yeah, like the, and it feels like the rear ends the reason the car is pushing then that's something you might want to adjust take some of that low rear speed um, dampening out of it and it might help free up that rear end and get the car to rotate. But this was the opposite case. It retained too much on corner entry. So then I just took a couple clicks of that out. And that helped. Uh, so I might do another click. But that definitely did help it become more stable in corner entry. After that, I was kind of just wanting to test some things. Because it still wasn't really rotating through turn one like I wanted. So I increased the front. This was an experiment. But I increased the front um, roll bar one click and I was thinking about just doing it but then I changed my mind did both of them so I went up this was at a three and this was at a one I went up one click here to two and I went up one click here to a four and they really just took away some of the bathtub feel of the car like it just had a more firm stance didn't roll over quite as much and just and overall it was more controllable and that was just a total by feel thing you know just Clicked it. I'm, it wasn't like okay, we'll click this, and it's just gonna make the car handle better. It's one of those settings where you can just you know do a holistic change, one click at the back, one click at the front, and then just see how it feels. Does it feel better? And then you can start to maybe make uh, some guesses why you think it feels better. And I just I just think it's a more stable platform, and it's not allowing as much body roll, so the car's just behaving a little bit better. And it's a lot better going through the S's too because it's direction. Um. That was about it, and that's where I'm at right now. I don't think... Oh, yeah. And the last thing I did was adjust the caster. So before it was at 6.46, went up to 6.66. The reason I was doing this is because, again, in turn one, I was having trouble. 
and it still wasn't going through there the way I wanted. So I figured if maybe if I just increase the caster just a little bit, then it'd help uh, rotate through the middle of that corner. And sure enough, it did, and it really helped just overall everywhere around the track. The car really seems to be in tune with the track now and can flow very nicely with it. And so caster is basically the angle at which your front tires in the wheel well. So if you had zero caster, your shock and spring would just be straight up and down perpendicular to the ground. The more angle of caster you have, the more you lean that top of the shock and the top of the spring back towards the driver. And as you do that, what happens dynamically now, <clears throat> now that you've rolled that um, or brought that top of the shock back so you have a lot more of an angle now when you actually turn the wheels on that it creates more camber so the front left will actually start creating more um, positive camber which is a good thing when you're going into one you just gotta think of like an NASCAR setup you kinda want more positive camber if you're going into that left hander on the inside then on the outside it creates a little bit more negative camber so it's a win-win situation you can't go too far and it does make the steering more heavy the more you go up and caster the lighter you go and caster the lighter the steering feel you have again that's another one of those things you kinda just gotta see where your car's at if you go up a little bit more with it will it actually help me and make me turn more through the corners or have I already gone too far and actually need to go the other way and then that's what's going to help me. So that's about what I did. So I figured I'd run a couple laps here and show you guys something a little different. So this is what I'm going to be doing from now on. Because I'm kind of fed up dealing with trying to stream OBS by actually capturing the game footage and not having good enough frames. So this way I get good frames it still takes about as many frames as it did with uh, doing the game capture but it's a lot smoother this way now um, it's just a webcam hooked up to I uh, just hooked it up to a, a GoPro mount and put it on uh, the head thing so now you got the first person camera I get better frame rates. I think the quality is actually better. It's cool. You guys get to see all three screens. Oh, yeah. Let me know what you think. Definitely a change, but mostly, I mean, it's all for performance reasons. I kind of do like the first person aspect of it too, because you can see where I'm looking, all that fun stuff. Alright, I'm going to start paying attention to driving. Again, this isn't a finalized set, but I feel pretty good about it. A lot better than I do in the first set I put out. And if you don't like your line going through that last corner, you just lift a little bit and help stabilize the car going up over the crest. But here's where I was having trouble turning, but now it's turning pretty good through there. Maybe get it turned just a little bit more. That was just a horrible corner. Alright, so after this lap, I'll start going over my breaking points. Going into here, breaking in between 400 and 300, depending on how much fuel the car has. Bring it down into second gear. Sometimes I like to hang third gear out a little bit longer. It just helps me get into the corner. And then just rolling through second gear all the way through here. Start going back up through the gears. Third third gear through here getting the brakes sometimes if you're in trouble like I was kind of right there went down to second gear because I was just a little too fast through the corner back down to third gear a little too fast for the corner again I'm down to second gear again there's no real braking markers it's kind of you just gotta do it by feel a lot of trail braking and wasn't too confident about getting out of that corner, so lift it before it. Got over the crest of the hill for stability. A 
air braking around the 200 board sometimes before it sometimes at it sometimes a little bit after it depending on the weather or the session you're in Ooh, this will be a good lap if I can finish it I'm up almost four tenths on my best so again I'm gonna break a little after the 400 this time and get in third just a little bit longer here because I was kind of Broke a little early and need to carry a little bit more speed before I got to the apex. Actually, I'm not three of that seconds up, tenths up on my best. I forgot this is a new server. Oh, it's almost over, anyways. So they're breaking at, what is that, 200 board? up on the fence it's a second board maybe it's like a 150 board or a 100 board look at it next time by what do you think man how you feeling Just broke a little bit before a 200 board, trying to keep as close to that white line as I can for as long as I can. Go down the back stretch here. And breaking a little bit after the 400, probably around the 380 mark that time. Probably go a little bit deeper. Again, all these breaking points, they usually change depending on how much fuel you got in the car, the track, the temperatures, all that stuff. Always staying through second gear through there, and then always third gear up through here. Here it does change. This time I'll go through here in third gear, but you can go down to second if you want. And here we're going to break at the 200, about 250 is when I start breaking there. And I didn't slow down enough. It's a little bit wider line than I'd like. They're breaking just before the 200 board, or maybe a little at it or a little after it. Probably need to be breaking at it or a little after it. I also find with this set, you know, it does all right the first couple laps, but it really starts to come alive later on in the race. As long as you just keep taking care of your car. Right now we're up uh, 200. So Try and give you a shot of the. <laughs> you guys can't see the LED thing on my heads up display, but you can see the bottom part of my display, but you can't see the top. Carry too much speed because I had a good lap going on. To, it was good as I could. Oh, I'll practice pit entry here real quick before we get out of here. Let's let it float out a little bit and then just hug this inside. A little bit too much speed. <laughs> Don't do it like that. That's why it's always a good idea to practice your pit stops. I just carried a little bit too much speed in there. But alright, I uh, hope you guys uh, enjoyed the new uh, video. Let me know what you think, and uh, let me know what you think of the setup. Okay, I'll be able to find it in the forums. Alright, see you guys later.